Welcome to Meva Analysis for Hedgehogs. So today's topic is PE malformations, um, which is actually the topic I wrote my master thesis about. So it's quite interesting. Please, if you have um, if you haven't done it, uh, please check out the previous videos on portable executable files, uh, so you understand this one. Uh, of course, if you already know how polybics would have files look like, then it might not be necessary. Okay, so what is a PU malformation? Well, every file type is specified or defined by, by the specification. And in case of the portable executable format, this is the PE COF specification or portable executable uh, common object file format specification. If this, um, if the rules in this specification are violated, um, then we have a malformation. And uh, so, I divided malformations into, or distinguished the uh, single field malformations and uh, structural malformations. And now I think I should turn on the light. All right, so, Single field malformations are quite um, simple. <laughs> so it's just one field that has a value that's not permitted uh, according to the specification. So one single value that's uh, different. For instance, the entry point might be zero for an EXA um, PE file, uh, in which case we may be able to execute uh, the header so you know mz is uh, those are the first bytes of the pot of executable file and this is actually the, um, in assembly this is uh, a valid instruction so starting from that you can execute code with an entry point of zero where some tools might say ah oh, that's not valid um, the size of raw data that's the uh, physical size of a section. You could set a value that's very large. If it's larger than the virtual size, oh damn it. I have to go correct this. If it's larger than the virtual size, then you will, uh, they will just simply take, eh, oh, I got it. <laughs> they will simply take the, um, virtual size instead of the size of raw data. The Windows loader will do that. Whereas any uh, parser might uh, attempt to read all of the size of raw data, so which might be even uh, too much for the file size. So yeah, can crash any parsers. So the structural informations we need to take a closer look at. So. Uh, yeah, let's check those out. There are quite a number of structural malformations. Uh, so uh, I made uh, or tried to make some a list of possible ones uh, or categories. So um, one possible malformation is the an unusual location. This uh, could be, for instance, if you put the section table into the overlay of a file. Uh, so any, any structure that is uh, in, in a location that where you don't expect it, that can be a malformation. An unusual ordering of structures as well, like uh, sections that are shuffled. Usually you expect them to be in the order they appear in the file, but uh, if you shuffle them that's possible too. You can have loops in structures where you don't expect them and uh, you can you can have an unusual amount of uh, these structures. For instance you can have so many sections that uh, uh, parsers are overwhelmed with it and crash, or you can have zero sections, which you wouldn't expect from a positive executive file. Um, deformed 
um, structure is also possible. You can have truncated structures, collapse structures, so overlapping structures, right? Um, structures that are duplicated, which is not the same as unusual amount because they are uh, duplicated in a way that they are different in memory than they are on uh, on disk. So, and also fractionated structures are possible. Okay, let's take a look at loops. Loops. I will just uh, give some examples, so it's too much to um, cover all my formations in this video. Maybe I will do some more later on. So loops, um, very interesting loop is the resource loop. As you may know from previous videos, uh, the resources are, the resource structure is actually a tree, which has three levels. And um, let's take a look at it. So far there's nothing unusual. So we have uh, our three levels and uh, the last node the last node in the tree is the data. Um, but then let's uh, just create a loop here because you know the number of levels is not a given. You can have more than three and you can create a loop. So parsers may attempt or may not get out of it. If they just read three levels, it's okay, but if they attempt to read more, they may um, get into this loop. Okay, another example is a collapsed um, structure. So let's take a look at the collapsed structure. We look at the collapsed optional header. By the way, if you're interested in these anomalies, check out Ange Albertini. I will put a link in the description below because he has made uh, lots of lots of uh, proof of concept files for um, port of executable mal mal malformations. So the collapse optional header is also used by um, Tiny PE, I think so. Yeah, but anyways, if we have the normal um, the normal PE file, we have an MS DOS star, we have the COP file header, then comes the optional header, and after that, the section table. Now, the thing is that the uh, beginning, the start of the section table is determined by a value called size of optional header. So, the size of optional header is actually not used to um, determine how much to read from the optional header. So. Windows will just read the optional header. Uh, but the size is used to determine the start of the section table. So if you put a smaller thighs, size than the optional header actually has, uh, the section table will overlap with the optional header. So that's a nice one. And yeah. Um, I think TinyPE uses that because uh, that's a project. Um, I will also put a link in the description below. It's pretty fascinating. Like um, the person who did this, I forgot the name. Um, they tried to make a part of executor file that's as small as possible. So they use all tricks available to make a file smaller. And that's certainly one of them because if you overlap the structures, you need less uh, bytes for the file. And uh, here comes the section table. Just to make this clear, that's the section table and that's um, the optional header. And we have this overlapping area, so yes. Another example is the fractionated um, structures. So we will take a look with Potex Analyzer. So here's an example for fractionated data structures. Um, actually, uh, there was a video by OA Labs about this, um, Packer. Um, the actual issue here is that the export section is um, just invalid like the, you can forget the whole um the whole in exports uh, structure it's just um in a in an arbitrary location so 
all of these imports are not valid, <laughs> most of them. And um, but the interesting thing is, I I, I tried to make um, Portex analyzer um, uh, to make it parse as much as possible. So. Uh, and now you can see that while trying to parse all of this, that the exports are splattered all over the place. Uh, you can see this here with the, um, what, it's violet, I guess, <laughs> uh, with the violet um, rectangles on this. Um, they are like everywhere, like even in the header and uh, the first section and what like, so um, that's yeah that's what it looks like if you have fractionated data it's like in, in several sections that's the definition um, and not together in one uh, location so the problem with this um, Firstly, if, if this was valid data, parsers might not be able to read it um, because they, the addresses um, that are used that are used are virtual addresses. So they have to calculate the uh, physical address and to do this correctly, they have to know that the um, data might be in different sections. So if they just assume it's in one section, they will calculate um, the physical addresses based on that, uh, on, on that section mapping. So they might end up reading uh, garbage from somewhere else. Uh, so that's a way to hide data from static tools could be. Well, in this case, it's um, the malformation has so many export entries that the tools usually crash while, uh, because they try to read all of them, or they may crash because some of those entries are also invalid. So, um, yeah, but there's a solution to this in Alab's video, which I will also link in the description below. It's a quite um, interesting packer that's still in the wild, so might need it. So I would like to talk a bit uh, about why malformations occur in part of executable files or actually any file really. Um, the reason is, of course, people might do this intentionally. So uh, parsers are confused. If an antivirus scanner is, for instance, they have to parse files too, so that they are not able to, they might not uh, detect the files the files as malicious, um, but then there are also malformations possible due to, um, well, by accident, because malware writers, for instance, they might not be aware, fully aware of the PE specification and just, um, well, try, see what works. For instance, they, someone might, um, decide to create a virus that enlarges the last section uh, to and puts the virus code into the last section when it infects the file. And uh, when they enlarge this section, they might um, not be aware that there are file alignments uh, that they have to take into account and just set something that, that's actually invalid according to the specification. Um, but when, when they try, it works, so they won't bother with it. Um, also, the fractionated data uh, may happen this way, like the virus uh, may um, add some imports to the host file because the virus code needs those imports. And um, I have seen this, and it might, does, uh, it might do this by adding the imports into the the own section, which is not the same section as um, where the imports of the host file are located. So you have imports spread over several sections because uh, the virus added some of them. And if parsers don't take into account that um, these, it's again, it's, I have to fix this. Really. <laughs>
if parsers don't take this into account, um, that uh, these uh, structures uh, can be in located in several sections, um, they will calculate the wrong addresses for them, specifically for the ones that are out of the section, so for the, for the ones that are uh, relevant for the virus code. Uh, and then you get garbage. Um, Back when I wrote my master thesis, I discovered that lots of static analysis tools were not able to read those inputs. And um, back then also, um, you know, I um, made bug reports to um, the authors. And uh, yeah, since then they have improved um, these. Last but not least, uh, what's the difference between uh, PE anomaly and PE malformation? Just to make this clear, uh, because oftentimes we talk about PE anomalies. I, um, actually, the uh, PE malformations are a subset of anomalies. Like uh, PE malformations are things that um, violate the specification. But an anomaly might not violate the specification. It might just be unusual. So that's the difference. Um, yeah, every PE malformation is also an anomaly, of course. But then there are just some non-default values that are um, that any parser should expect because it's what the specification says. Then an example are section names like the specification will tell you if you have resources put that in the dot rsrc section but actually it can have any name um, so it's not a problem for parsers uh, usually uh, but still it's interesting for you if you analyze a file because if the section is has a different name that might be a hint to a certain packer that would that was used um, or sometimes malware will just have some weird names in the sections. And yeah, like I said, PE malformations might cause uh, problems with parsers where they are not able to um, read certain data or crash. So we make a little skull here for this. It's dangerous. So, if you want to read more about portable executable anomalies, anomalies uh, check out the Kokami project and you may also check out my uh, read my master thesis, or at least the first part of it. Um, the other stuff might not be that interesting. So, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you later.